Gourmet Guitars, the best Luthiers DVD series. From guitar enthusiasts for guitar enthusiasts. This one is uh, some very, very nice uh, Hawaiian koa uh, for the back and sides. It's a very deep body uh, with the secondary lining of Indian rosewood to uh, stiffen up the rim where the top will be attached. And then this has the braces uh, that are graphite topped. I first did this on, on the guitar that I made for Henry Kaiser uh, to take to Antarctica. Not only is it incredibly cold there, but it is very, very dry. When you get down to those, you know, minus 30, minus 40 Fahrenheit temperatures, the humidity is also down way below 20%. This guitar, which Rick Turner and I call Miss Antarctica, Rick made for me to take to Antarctica in 2001, 2002, when I went there for the first time under a National Science Foundation Antarctic Artists and Writers grant to make a solo guitar CD about Antarctica, which is about to come out. And I used this guitar in the field in Antarctica and mistreated it. He, he doesn't baby his guitars, and they're tools to him. And so I wanted to build a guitar that could fall off the back of a, a ski mobile and survive. Rick designed it to stand up to the uh, the rigors of 0% humidity, 40 degrees below, getting knocked around, falling out of helicopters, working out in the sea ice, things like that. It did not move in the three months in Antarctica. The, the playability of the guitar was never compromised by climactic changes of the top. It's a nice guitar. It's got dead strings on it now, so good luck if it's sounding any good. Uh This guitar is one of the things that helped me go there and helped me get the job. So thank you, Miss Antarctica. And it has some really strong bracing. When Rick was making this, he took a picture of himself standing on top of the box. Um, the neck, which would be detachable if you wanted, like the Howorm, uh, has an adjustable neck angle and everything. So what, whatever the weather did to it there, we could uh, adjust it. This is our wide belt sander. It is what we use to sand the guitar tops and backs. And it's, it's a great machine. The concept of the Renaissance came out of working with, um, with Gibson for several years and listening to what people had to say about the Chet Atkins models. The, uh, the Chets are very heavy. They are a, um, basically a solid bodied instrument with a spruce top on them. And over the years, they've hollowed various sections out and put balsa in and done this and done that. Um, so in doing the Renaissances, I decided to uh, go back to a more traditionally made instrument uh, and something that is based on the Ramirez shape, which, which is from here to here. Um, but do the center block, which is like the 335, the bolt-on neck and the strings through the body like a Telecaster. So it's, uh, it's kind of, you take those three guitars and 
get them into a barroom brawl and the thing that stumbles out is one of these. It's like an all-terrain sport utility vehicle, but without the gas guzzling issues. You know <laughs> <laughs> a nice lightweight instrument, doesn't feed back, sounds amazingly acoustic and can be pushed to uh, uh, to any volume level with, with the same tone characteristics. They don't have feedback issues like a traditional acoustic guitar does. They, um, I can be in a fairly loud ba band situation, I can be playing with an overbearing bass player who's playing really loud, and I just don't have that kind of triggering effect that you do with a full-size acoustic guitar. There's that zone in between everything working fine and feedback where everything is just weird. You can't really identify uh, that feedback is happening and yet you wind up with the instrument's resonances being exaggerated. I also sound, found it great because I'm very much into MIDI guitar that it was something that I could put a MIDI guitar pickup on, a Roland pickup on without uh, offending me. Without offending you. <laughs> but not only that, but just, just that if you try to put something like this on an acoustic guitar, uh, it just doesn't quite translate. One thing about these is that they have a sustain a bit more like electric guitar. They're a little longer in sustain. Uh, that really helps the MIDI aspect. Uh, uh, but even more than that is it just allows you to play kind of with an electric person's mind, if you will, is that I can play and know that the, sound, the strings are going to sustain about like they will with an electric guitar. Also, this is one of the few kind of hybrid instruments that actually sounds good straddling both worlds. I'll sometimes use this with overdrive and distortion. Uh, I use a lot of signal processing. It really holds up under that. Uh, and I also do a lot of uh, loop recording. It is a Renaissance guitar. It's a baritone 12 string. Walnut back there. Um, and it's not even in tune, so I'm not going to tune it. It's too many strings to tune today. But it's a fantastic instrument direct or into a really clean amp and uh, did several pieces for the CD on this guitar and I think his whole renaissance design of those uh, acoustic electrics are, uh, are great guitars. But the other thing I'm gonna uh, hopefully be getting soon is uh, a fretless renaissance bass so it's the same body size same pickup configuration, but uh, but a bit in bass, a fretless bass, and I'm uh, excited about that because even though I don't play bass that much, uh, that's the sound I'm really kind of looking for, which is almost like a stand-up bass sound, M more that kind of big low end character, uh, but not, you know, obviously a much more convenient thing for somebody like me to play. Gourmet Guitars, the best Luthiers DVD series. From guitar enthusiasts for guitar enthusiasts.